All right, so here we have a mollusk, um, specifically in the class bivalva. So in the class bivalva, just drop my teasing needle. In the class bivalva, uh, these individuals will have two uh, sh uh, outer shells that they can close um, like this using a single hinge. So if we take a closer look at the shells, each one of these lines is a growth ring. Uh, and so these growth rings um, show how the mantle was, ex was excreting uh, calcium carbonate uh, over time. So if you look all the way back to the hinge, uh, you can see how small this uh, individual was uh, when it was first starting out uh, to lay down calcium carbonate and begin its shell after it was in its glochidia larvae uh, stage. So in class bivalva, bi meaning two, uh, we have two shells. So these two uh, very dark uh, structures here and here are what attach to the shells um, and keep them closed. So these are called abductor muscles and these abductor muscles uh, uh, can close the shell with a lot of strength and keep it closed for a very long time but it can't uh, open with a lot of force. So I like to give the analogy of a door but there's a really good example uh, that one of the students came up with was an alligator. So uh, the same principle is gonna be ha happening here. So if you take an alligator, if you've ever seen Steve Irwin just holding uh, an alligator's mouth shut with just one hand, it's because they have uh, their muscles that attach to their jaws right near the hinge where those jaws open up. So they can open uh, or they can close that jaw with a lot of force, a tremendous amount of force, but they can't close it or they can't open it um, with any force. And so the same principle is occurring here with that abductor muscles, which are really close to this hinge. So if you've had physics, uh, you should know about the difference between in levers and out levers uh, and fulcrum points. And so having these abductor muscles closer to uh, the hinge or the fulcrum is changing the ratio of in levers to out levers. So that's just a side note, you don't need to know that. This thin uh, membranous structure right through here, uh, if I can get my teasing needle underneath of it, right here, this is the mantle. So uh, all mollusks will have uh, one of four things. They'll have a, a mantle, they'll have a foot, um, gills, and a visceral mass. And so this is one of those four things. Uh, and this is what is excreting that calcium carbonate. If you look closely, I just peeled up one side of the mantle, get the shell out of the way. This mantle is attached uh, right at the very edge of this shell, so it's secreting that calcium carbonate from this thickened uh, layer here, and over time, this outer layer is what's going to be expanding uh, from those layers of calcium carbonate that this mantle is applying. And so, this mantle is uh, attached or layering on calcium carbonate, uh, and so you can see that in all the growth rings in this shell. So if we move uh, the mantle out of the way, and we just tear it here for a second, so we can see the rest of the muscle. Don't want to tear it too much. All right, so from here, you can see the other three structures. So you can see the gills uh, right here, if I can get one up with my teasing needle. So these are the gills. This structure right here is a visceral mass. It's just this uh, sac-like structure that holds all the internal organs. And then here, this really rough structure, this is the foot of that individual. <clears throat> so this foot uh, acts in a way where uh, it, this, this muscle can actually move around with it, so it serves uh, a locomotive purpose. Um, it also can be modified in some species to look like a, uh, a fish, and then they'll take that lure, uh, or what's called glochidia lure, They'll put it outside their shell and undulate it um, to, in hopes of attracting a larger fish. That larger fish will strike that lure uh, and get trapped in the shell here uh, where this individual will release glochidia larvae if it has a uh, lure like that. So uh, going back to the gills, these are extremely thin. Uh, they're used to uh, pass oxygen directly from the water uh, into the bloodstream of these uh, these organisms. 
So these are extremely thin, uh, and they have these really thin lines on them. So this is increasing surface area with a very small amount of tissue. Food is also being trapped in these, uh, uh, these gills. And so these small triangle structures right here uh, actually act as a comb and scrape away that food particles and push it towards the incurrent siphon, which is a small hole. Let's see if you guys can see it. Move it out of the way, right here on the underside of that labial palp. So food's getting trapped in the gills, being pushed towards the mouth or the incurrent siphon with this labial palp here. If we want to see the heart, we'd have to move the gills out of the way. Um, but first, before I do that, there's this small opening right here. Uh, and so this is called the pericardial uh, cavity. And so this is where fluid is pulling up um, before it enters the ostea on the other side. Uh, it gets passed into the heart, and from there it gets circulated. So the difference between these guys, uh, mollusks, and the other uh, organisms that we talked about this week uh, in the phylum Annelida is that mollusks have an open circulatory system, annelids have a closed circulatory system. So these guys are actively pumping fluid uh, around their shell, uh, past the gills, um, and then it enters uh, this ostea, or this pericardial cavity right here, and from there it enters the heart, gets pumped within their body, uh, and so on and so forth. So they don't have uh, those defined capillary beds or veins that we saw, or vessels that we saw in the annelids. So if we move these gills out of the way, we'll be able to see, oops, I just tore one, get those out of the way. This really membranous structure, so here we have that pericardial cavity. This membranous structure here is what we consider the heart. So that's actually going to be pumping uh, that, that body fluid throughout the body. So if you bear with me a second, I'm going to tear out this muscle uh, and we'll look at some more of the internal features. So, just tearing it away from uh, the mantle, the gills, uh, the abductor muscles, and the shell. Once we're left, we just have this visceral mass here uh, and this foot structure here. So you might be able to see an incurrent siphon or excurrent siphon. Um, most likely not. So, I'm going to use a scalpel. I know I told you guys not to use scalpels yet, but for the sake of cutting something quickly, I'm going to do it. So we're just going to take a cross section of this individual um, and look at the inside of the visceral mass. So the visceral mass is just acting like a sac uh, to hold all these organs such as digestive gland, uh, the intestine, and the gonads. All right. Let's see if I can get it to stay like this. All right, so once we have this visceral mass opened up, you can see a couple of uh, distinct uh, areas or regions. So this tube-like structure here is the intestine. So that intestine is coiling from the incurrent siphon, uh, coiling throughout this visceral mass until it exits out to the excurrent siphon uh, right next to the anus. So as it's coiling, uh, water's flowing through it, carrying both food particles uh, throughout its body. Those food particles are digested uh, right here in this green area uh, on either side. And so this is called the digestive gland. This is uh, absorbing nutrients, di uh, secreting uh, enzymes um, to digest whatever food particles enter its intestine. From there, water keeps flowing uh, out the excurrent siphon just past the anus. So that excurrent siphon is uh, functioning to carry out um, water as well as push uh, waste away from the anus um, out into the water column. So it has a dual function there. All this tan material that you see uh, here, this is all gonads. So there's both, uh, there's distinct males and females uh, in mollusks. They produce uh, a single gamete, either uh, sperm or eggs. And so that is all uh, produced in this tan area here. So this is uh, the 
very basic uh, dissection of a mollusk. Um, they all generally have, uh, well, especially even bivalves, they all generally have these structures, but everything in the class, or the phylum mollusca, will have uh, four things. They'll have um, a visceral mass, a foot, uh, gills, and a mantle. So I don't have my favorite specimen, but uh, if you give me a second, I'm going to go grab it and I'll show each of the structures on a separate, uh, fairly distinct organism. So I didn't grab uh, Cryptopsis stellarii, uh, the giant Pacific chitin, but here is another Polyplacophora, uh, another chitin, and so this is in the clat or the phylum mollusca, but it looks very different from um, a, mus uh, a mollusk or a, sorry, a clam. So uh, they look nothing alike, but they all have these common characteristics. So there's a mantle. So if you flip this guy over, there's this thin line right here. That's the mantle. That's excreting uh, this structure here. So chitons will have eight plates. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They'll have these eight plates, uh, scleratized uh, or hardened plates, um, down the row of their body. They'll have uh, this structure here. And so this is the foot of this, uh, this chiton. Uh, right up here. Uh, this looks like it's part of the foot, but it's actually not. This is what we would call a radula. So these chitons are sitting on a rock, uh, scraping away algae, and so they use this structure here called a radula, get it back in the view of the camera, uh, this radula to scrape that algae and pass it into their intestinal system. So we've gone through a foot and a mantle. In between the foot and the mantle is this uh, really fine structures here and so these are uh, the gills. So they look kind of like cilia. Um, once again, just having lots of uh, very thin structures is increasing surface area uh, to obtain oxygen. So the visceral mass uh, is underneath this foot within the body uh, of this chitin. So all chitons have those four characteristics. All uh, mollusks have those four characteristics. They have a mantle, they have gills, they have visceral mass, and they have a foot. So neat organisms. I was reading up on them last night, and there's uh, a couple chitons that stay in the exact same spot for uh, have been recorded in the exact same spot for 25 some years, uh, just scraping away algae uh, along the tides. So neat group, uh, one of my favorites. So. Other than that, uh, that was a brief uh, discussion dissection of a uh, quahog or a clam. Um, so phylum mollusca uh, class uh, bivalva.